Hello and welcome. Well, winter is definitely here and there's nothing better than staying in and snuggling in with your little ones. And as we tend to spend um, increased time indoors during these cooler months, um, this naturally exposes us to greater risks of burns and scolds as we find ways to keep ourselves nice and warm. Now I've got a question for you. Did you know that 80% of serious burns and scolds uh, to young children actually occur in the home? It's incredible. Now, due to this, um, experts are urging parents and carers to be vigilant to reduce the hazards this winter, as it's definitely a time of heightened burns risk. And um, this call comes from KidSafe as the, at the beginning of the National Burns Awareness Month, an Australian-wide campaign to raise awareness of the prevention and appropriate first aid measures for minor burns. And joining us today is KidSafe South Australian CEO, Holly Fitzgerald, who is a national spokesperson for the campaign. Thank you so much for joining us today, Holly. How are you? Yes, good. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks for, for having us on. It's always great chatting to you guys. And um, well, firstly, as the, the national spokesperson for KidSafe um, on this particular campaign, is this something that you're, I guess, like per personally passionate about? Uh, yes, yeah, definitely. Burns, burns prevention. Um, I've been with, with KidSafe, with the organisation for, for over 14 years now. Um, we're all about prevention. So we, we don't sort of work in the, in the burns treatment space, but we certainly do uh, work collaboratively with the amazing burns nurses and the burn surgeons at the major children's hospitals around the country. And the work that they do is absolutely amazing. So, you know, we are passionate about the prevention side of things. We really, you know, don't want children coming to the big paediatric hospitals around the country to be treated for, for burns. We know that burns are extremely painful. We know that you know, they require sometimes many years of treatment and operations that are extremely painful. And then you know, often children are left with lifelong disability and scarring. So we're in the, uh, the business, Kids Safe's in the business of prevention. And, and look, when it comes to burns and scalds, um, prevention is absolutely key. And that's what, that's Kids Safe's vision and mission. That's what I'm passionate about from a, from a work perspective, but, yes. but also from a personal perspective. I've got a 16 month old little boy who is very much uh, active, um, who really has no concept of danger so he's you know he's getting into everything so you know personally at home I'm conscious about burns prevention and at work you know it's at top of mind for me as well. Absolutely and like I was just saying at the start it's hard to believe that 80 percent of serious burns and scolds to young children actually occur in the home um, which is a lot um, so can you just maybe give us a little bit of an overview as to what part of the home um, this generally occurs in? So yeah, we know that the home is the most common location for a young child to be burned, uh, with the kitchen being the most dangerous uh, room of, of the house. That's where the majority of those serious burn injuries occur. And really, you know, that the toddler age group, that birth to five year age group, they are most at risk. So, you know, they, in terms of, of the serious burn injuries and the, and the hospital admissions, um, we are seeing, um, you know, that birth to five year age group where they really don't have any concept of the danger. So the kitchen, obviously, you know, that's a, uh, a bit of a no brainer in the, in, in the fact that, that the cooking's happening, that's where the hot water is in terms of the kettle, that's where we're using the microwave. So young children in that environment does increase the risk. Um, the most common, I guess, ways that those burn injuries do occur. Uh, hot drinks, hot tea and coffee spills are a, a common one. Um, hot foods, instant type foods, like your, your two minute noodles, you might boil the kettle, pour the hot water in um, to, the, to the cup. Uh, microwaved foods, the microwave heats really inconsistently. So there's often hot spots in food if it's not yep. mixed well and tested, that's another really common way. Uh, even microwaving milk for you know bottles you know if you don't mix and test mix and test there can be hot spots in the milk that can cause burns in the mouth 
So yeah, um, we do know hot uh, tea and coffee in particular. So scalds, hot liquid, hot foods are probably the most common way a young child will be burned in the home. Um, you know, we do know in winter as well, contact burns are really common. So, so that's heaters, barbecues, appliances, children, you know, touching something hot and sustaining a contact burn that way. Um, you know, those types of injuries, you know, are more um, prevalent in the winter months, you know, when we have our heaters on. So, you know, restricting access uh, to those hazardous um, uh, environments is really important because, like I said, children of a young age, they don't understand that it's hot. They don't understand that they're going to hurt themselves. So it's our responsibility as parents and carers just to eliminate the hazard, restrict access, have that gate around the heater, you know, make sure that children either, you know, aren't accessing the kitchen where um, there are a number of, of burn hazards and just making sure that, you know, they just don't have access to those hazardous situations. Even things like hair straighteners as well, would you say? Simple things like that, which you can sort of just have lying around and although that's turned off at the, um, the switch, um, still the, the, the device itself is going to be sort of very, very hot. So do, do you see many injuries and, 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 and hear stories about things like even like hair straighteners at all? Hair straighteners are very much associated with burn injuries to young children. Right. I mean, they can reach temperatures of well over 200 degrees Celsius. So, you know, and you think about a hair straightener, they do take a while to cool down. Often there's a long cord that's hanging down that children sort of access or grab hold of and pull the hot, you know, hair straightener onto themselves. So, yeah, hair straighteners, and that's been a more you know, a perhaps more recent emerging yes. issue as hair straighteners, those types of appliances are becoming more and more popular. So yeah, hair straighteners, irons, still we see treadmills is another one that's more... Treadmills? Um, yeah, treadmills. Um, that's more of like a, like a, yeah, contact burn with treadmills. Yeah, so wow. they're uh, various appliances around the home. So you think not just the kitchen, but bathroom as well. Hmm. And... Talking about um, temperatures as well, um, hot liquid at 60 degrees, is it, that um, it only takes is it one second to cause a third degree burn to a child's skin and water boils at 100 degrees. So <laughs> there isn't a, a, a big variance, I guess, between 160 degrees, but it only takes one second to, 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 to cause that third degree burn. So do you think hot water, as you mentioned before, is, I guess, the, the most common? Um, sort of injury with, with burns in the in the house, in the home? Yeah, so, so yeah, hot water, um, so at 60 degrees Celsius, as you said, it takes one second to cause a third degree scald to a child's skin. So that's instant. So obviously anything above 60 degrees Celsius is just an instant third degree scald. So, you know, yeah, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. So you might pour that hot tea or coffee and, you know, even five, 10 minutes later, it may be above that 60 degrees Celsius. So, you know, it's, um, it's something that can happen so fast. And when we talk about, um, say, the bath, so we talk about water coming out of the tap, say, in the case of, of a bath, um, if you can have a, if you can, um, uh, temper the temperature or reduce the delivery temperature of water in your bathroom in your bath to 50 degrees Celsius that is a really really um, uh, successful preventative measure because we know at 50 degrees Celsius it takes five minutes to cause a third degree scalp so that's obviously enough time to react um, and and prevent the burn injury occurring in the first place. So mm. uh, we encourage all parents to check the delivery temperature of the water in their bath, uh, where children will be bathing, and make sure that it does not exceed 50 degrees Celsius. That is really, really important. And that's an environmental measure um, that all families can do um, to reduce yeah, burns occurring in the home. Mm. I actually remember having something happen to me when I was three. Um, uh, it was a burn in the kitchen, hot water. So there we go. <laughs> and um, my, we had um, family and I had a relative um, who um, simultaneously without realising were placing me down on the table, but they were putting um, a hot cup of coffee um, for my auntie who was holding me at the time. And of course I had my Terry toweling undies on um, and um, 
I, I remember being thrown into the shower straight after. Um, I don't remember going to the hospital. I don't necessarily, I don't think I had uh, third degree burns, but I do remember it being a, a big bit of a chaos in the house where it was just something that was an accident and it really could have just been preventable. So the question is, I guess, would you say the majority of burns in the house uh, can be preventable? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, burns are preventable. And you know, that just, you know, that incident that you just explained then just shows how quickly it can happen. You know, young children can just, you know, throw their arms out or reach up and grab something hot and pull it down on top of themselves. And, you know, often the burn injuries can be to, you know, to the face or the neck or the chest or in the lap if they're pulling things down on top of themselves. Yes. So yeah, majority of uh, the burn injuries, particularly in the home, can be can be prevented, um, you know, and, and that's sort of what KidSafe is here to assist parents and carers is to just think about where those burn, potential burn hazards are in your own home environment and just thinking about how they can be prevented. And, you know, we, we develop information and resources to support parents through that. So, we have a burn safety checklist, which is a really simple checklist that anyone can just go through with, you know, a tick cross sort of um, checklist that you can, you know, identify any potential burn hazards in your own home. And, you know, there's things that perhaps parents and carers haven't even thought of yet. So, you know, once again, just spending that, you know, small amount of time to ultimately, yeah, prevent something catastrophic from happening. Yes, and we'll make sure um, we have the link um, in the show notes, um, definitely to to your checklist, um, as it is something I think it, it it only takes a few minutes just to read through it. But if it is going to sort of trigger, I guess, a thought pattern and, and or change and prevent anything from happening, it definitely is worth that time, no doubt. Yes, reading. Um, now we published your article titled "Preventing Burns and Scolds This Burns Awareness Month." For someone who hasn't read the article, can you give us a little bit of an overview of what it's about and just tell us what inspired you to write it? Well, what inspired us is National Burns Awareness Month, which is the month of June. It's an Australia-wide initiative, um, a KidSafe initiative in collaboration with ANSBA, the Australian New Zealand Burns Association. Mm -hmm. um, and the whole purpose of National Burns Awareness Month is just purely to raise awareness of burns prevention and the correct first aid. So. Uh, we just want to reinforce those messages and remind everyone um, how to prevent burns and the key messages around first aid if a burn, you know, does occur. So, mm. yeah, and, and we've re recently had some, um, some new data come through from 2018 and 19, which, yeah, which shows that almost 30% of um, children aren't receiving the correct first aid after a burn. So, you know, that just really does highlight the importance of reminding parents about those key messages. And I guess National Burns Awareness Month, every June, we, we, we launch it at the start of winter. We know winter is the most common time for a burn to occur. Um, and yeah, we just really want to disseminate um, those important messages. So, um, and yeah, I guess and obviously, so sorry, go. <laughs> sorry, Rachel, you go. No, I was just going to say for those who may not be aware, really, um, how common are childhood uh, burns, and and I guess also how many of these children aren't receiving, um, I guess, the, the correct first aid treatment. Yep, so, so that data um, from the Burns Registry of Australia and New Zealand, so they just released some recent data from 2018-19. So, yeah, over 900 children aged under 15 were admitted to a Burns unit across Australia and New Zealand. Wow. So that's approximately 17 a week, um, and they are hospital admissions. So they represent the more serious type um, injuries. Um, and yes, yeah, 17 a week um, to hospitals across Australia and New Zealand. Um, and that those numbers do remain relatively consistent from year to year. It's just one of those things that, you know, the, the burn cause may change from year to year, but the overall numbers do remain relatively consistent. Um, and yeah, around just under a third of children do not receive the correct first aid treatment after a burn has occurred. Now that is really, really important because, 
yeah, the correct first aid treatment can be the difference uh, between, um, you know, the, the, the long-term outcome of that burn injury. And it can mean, you know, the difference between that burn being um, really serious and require, um, you know, ongoing rehabilitation and, and, and surgery, as opposed to, you know, it more it healing more naturally um, and mm. not so, so deep. So the first aid, um, particularly with children, is so important. And that is, I guess, a key message of National Burns Awareness Month we want to get across, is that 20 minutes call running water. Uh, on the burn as soon as it happens to call that burn down that is really really important yeah so so that's what parents should do if uh, parents and carers do if a child does sustain um a, a burn is is 20 minutes with cold water yep. that's right 20 minutes uh cool running water uh from the tap so certainly do not put anything else on that burn so you know, people think ice is helpful or there's a lot of old wives' tales around oil or butter. Absolutely not. Do the, Those things can make the burn worse. Do not put anything on the burn. Just run straight away, run it under cool running water. So not icy water, not cold water. Cool running water from the tap for 20 minutes. And that 20 minutes is really important. So, and that you know, when we're talking about children and young children in particular, that can be difficult to have, you know, a young children there for 20 minutes, you know, keeping them under, you know, the burn under the, the tap. But, you know, that is, is really important. And, and that 20 minutes, so not, not 10, you know, not 12, not 15 minutes, but that 20 minutes call running water from the tap. That's really great advice. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and a lot of the other advice um, would naturally be in the in the checklist, which we're going to share the link link yes. to as well. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I was just going to say, is there anything else from the checklist that you want to share with us, or should we just share the link? Do you think? Well, let's maybe maybe if we just go through the first aid steps. We we obviously spoke about the key. Um, That'd be great. Um, treatment, which is the twenty minutes. So. But first and foremost, we encourage, um, you know, the removal of any clothing or jewellery yep. around the burn, if it's not unless it's stuck to the skin. So do not touch it or remove it if it's stuck to the skin. Then we want to cool the burn down. So that's the 20 minutes um, cool running water. So no oil, no ice, no ice packs, no pack of peas from the freezer. No. Um, the, the 20 minutes cool running water only. Just the water. Um, yep, just the water. And then... Um, cover the burn with a clean dressing and you need to seek medical attention which is this is really really important if uh, the burn is anywhere on a vital area so the face or the hands or the feet or the lap or the, or the genitals um, you need to seek medical attention or if it's bigger than a 20 cent piece anywhere on the body you okay. would administer the first aid and then you would seek medical attention mm -hmm. Um, and that is, yeah, they are the steps which are outlined um, on our on our website and on our checklist as well. So that information is readily available. I know we have uh, magnets, first aid magnets that clearly just step out the first aid um, practice. Um, so most uh, families, if 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 they don't have one of those magnets on their fridge now, they can contact KidSafe um, to receive one of those, and then you know that important information is forever hopefully on their on their fridge and they can access and use that anytime they need to it's a great reminder yes i have one on my fridge actually so thank you <laughs> and i look at it all the time now <laughs> now um as we mentioned um at the start of the chat you know the most common area um for home burns is the kitchen um do you have any stories that maybe you can share with us um where children have have, have learnt um in particular uh, which i've read um in your article to stop drop roll um that has maybe helped say save their life or helps to save them in general yes yeah, stop drop cover and roll we we practice that we um have a burn safe program um, in preschools and schools where we deliver um, key burn preventative messaging as well as first aid messaging. And we practice actually um, stop, drop, cover and roll, which is, so it's always nice to see a group of, um, of primary school or 
uh, early childhood age children um, practicing that. Um, and that's obviously to put out um, uh, a fire if your clothing is on fire. So, so yeah, that's a really important message. If your clothing catches on fire, um, then to stop, drop, cover and roll to put that, um, to put that fire out to reduce the risk of burn injury. Um, but in terms, going back to your question, Rachel, around um, the kitchen and you know incidents occurring, I, I think we mentioned before um, in in younger children, preschool age children, it's very much hot tea and coffee spills. In older children, often it's where they might have a bit more independence and they are making food themselves and they have access to the microwave. That would make sense. So you know, and that's the yeah, that's the two minute noodles and the instant type foods. Um, you know, just thinking about the microwave and where that's positioned, often, often that's positioned at a level easy accessible for an adult, but for a child that's reaching up. So often they're pulling things out and perhaps on top of themselves, you know, if they're um, out of the microwave after they've heated up some food or, or beverage. So, you know, that's another thing to think about. Um, also the oven, you know, the, the contact burns with the oven heating up um, and young children reaching up and touching or sustaining contact burns that way. That's another common one. Um, and then obviously hot water from the kettle, jugs and kettles. So thinking about cords that might be hanging down where young children reach up and pull down on top of themselves. Um, and then obviously you just your hot drinks in a mug. You know, even, even nursing young children, you know, if, you, if you're drinking a hot tea or coffee, you might have in one hand and a, ch and a child on your lap or in your arms. All it takes is for them to throw their oh. arms out or, or lunge forward and spill the hot drink on top of themselves. It can happen so quickly. That's another really common way. So, um, you know, when you think about all those things and in winter, you know, boy, do we love our hot drinks and our hot comfort foods, you know, and that is why we see you know, an increase of those injuries during the winter months. Yes. Um, and another thing I wanted to ask you about also are candles in the home. Um, you know, being winter, we, we may tend to, to want to light them a little bit more, to have the ambience of being in and snug and warm. Um, so, you know, is there, um, I guess, any um, spe specific advice that you have with regards to, to candles and, and I guess just um, ensuring that we're not having them as, as an increased uh, risk for burns and scalds at all? So yeah, candles, um, certainly with young children, they need, you need to keep them up high and out of reach. So they're completely inaccessible. Um, once again, children will be, young children will be fascinated with them. Mm. Um, they'll be drawn to them um, and want to touch them and access them and, you know, put things over them. And, um, and then, yeah, in older children um, who may be interested them, in them for, for, for different reasons, may be fascinated with fire and want to play with matches and lighters, we do see sort of that interest, you know, coming through as they get a bit older. So just, yeah, making matches and lighters and candles, you know, preferably inaccessible to children, you know, have them up high or in a locked cupboard so that, you know, children can't access them because, yeah, you know, across all ages, they can be fascinated with fire and be drawn to it. So we just want to eliminate that risk altogether. Mm. So <clears throat> we've spoken about the kitchen, we've spoken about the, the hot water and, and the food associated um, as r risks. Um, we've spoken a little bit about the hot water in, in the bathtub because, um, you know, well, I guess we may tend to sort of run the bath water a little warmer than normal. This time of year provided maybe the bathroom is a little bit um, cooler in the winter months. Um, so this is something um, that, that could be sort of quite easily um, sort of, uh, I guess, mistaken as, as, a, as, a, um, as a risk in the, in the, in the house. Um, but the other thing I just wanted to speak a little bit more about is just the heaters in, in the home as well. Is there anything else or any other advice that you have for families um, around maybe standalone heating units or anything like that at all? Yeah, so, so yeah, thinking about heaters in the home and, you know, a, a gas heater or, or where there is sort of... Um, you know, direct heat or, you know, and, and, and a flame or a hot surface, um, once again, you need to restrict access to that. And that can be by just 
yeah, a barrier, just having some sort of barrier there um, to stop children from accessing it. But it's also, you know, we can we can restrict access, we can we can supervise children to, to reduce the risk. But also it is about educating and informing children, teaching them about safety. You know, not just saying perhaps, you know, no, you know, don't go there, don't touch this all the time, but explaining why, learning about safety. Safety yes. is a learnt behaviour. So explaining no, that's hot. Um, if you touch that, you might hurt yourself, really hurt yourself. You might burn yourself and we might need to, to go to the hospital. So explaining the why, not just the no all the time. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and that is very much, you know, I'm going through that now myself with a 16 month old, um, the, the hot and, and, and no, and you know, you can really hurt yourself if you touch that. So yeah, that is part and parcel with the, with the prevention and restricting access and providing supervision, but also teaching about safety. Yes. Another thing I wanted to ask about, not necessarily associated directly with burns per se, but it's just electric blankets and, the, and their safety in winter months as well. Um, I just remember um, as a child also um, mum putting the electric blanket on as I was going to bed and it sparked a little bit. Um, and that was straight, you know, obviously sheets off, <laughs> took it off, it was, it was gone. Um, is this just something that we should be a little bit more vigilant around this time of year as well? provided if children do have electric blankets on their beds at all? Yes, obviously, you know, with anything like that, you know, it's just important to, to obviously buy, you know, um, anything that's compliant with Australian standards, um, you know, checking them regularly as well for wear and tear because, you know, like anything, it, it sort of deteriorates over time. So making sure, you know, the mechanism you know, continues to work well. Yeah. Um, following the manufacturer's recommendations, often there's a lot of safety information or safety warnings associated with those products. So just being sort of conscious and smart about the purchase of those products, making sure you're, you're doing your research and you're informed about that, and then following manufacturer's instructions um, in terms of the safety aspects. That's really important. And that's certainly, yeah, applicable for... Um, for children obviously you know for young children for babies and toddlers they're not recommended um obviously yeah that that can increase the risk of, of overheating so they're not recommended for for babies and toddlers certainly that um um but yeah just following the the manufacturer's instructions is really important yes thank you for that advice um another thing i wanted to chat about uh, this is with regards to, I guess, the, the rate of admission um, for um, Australian burn units for the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander population. Is it true that um, the rate of that is actually um, more than triple um, um, than, I guess, non-Indigenous population? Is, 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 that, is, that, is that true? So, yeah, we do know that um, Indigenous communities are overrepresented in, in burn numbers. Um, we do know that. Um, and uh, from a kid safe point of view, really important to have um, targeted support um, and information for those communities, um, which we, we, we do. And um, yeah, it's, it's one of those things. I, certainly, um, the numbers are uh, speak for themselves. They are much higher, yes. um, and yes. the causes, um, you know, do 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 for young children are, are very similar in terms of, of of hot tea and coffee and spills. Perhaps more fire related burn injuries. I know we've just recently done a big campfire awareness um, campaign, and that was in the lead up to the June long weekend because obviously everyone's back out camping. The campsites were full. Uh, we see an increase in burn injuries um, in relation to campfires over long weekends. We see that here in, at the Women's and Children's Hospital in South Australia. So we just wanted to highlight and, and, and um, reinforce those messages in the lead up to the long weekend. Um, and the campfire burns are uh, are one in particular that really do rely on the parent and carer making sure that those injuries don't occur and that the, the environment is safe. So, 
you know, just watching and supervising very young children around campfires, um, but also putting out campfires at night with water. That is the key message and not sand or dirt because often they continue to burn through the night and they're still hot in the morning. And that's when little ones often, you know, get up, wander out of the tent and walk or fall straight into a still hot burning campfire. And those injuries are serious. Yes. They can be very serious. So yeah, so campfires is another one to be really, really, really wary of. And that is watching young children, supervising them at all times actively. So having someone, having a, a responsible parent, um, watching children around the campfire at all times. But then it's also about putting that campfire out properly before everyone goes to bed so that you can feel comfortable and confident that it's not hot in the morning when children get up and wander out. It's the same with those fire pits as well. There's a lot of those um, yes. that we have now um, and, and or fire pits and or chimeneas um, or any, any sort of um, open fire um, in the house and or in the, in the backyard as, as well, would you say? Same thing? Definitely. Those are very popular um, now and for the backyard and people enjoying, you know, uh, which is which is great, enjoying that sort of atmosphere in their own backyard, you know, that camping sort of feeling. And certainly sort of doing that over um, the last few months when we've been at home more, you know, setting up camp in the backyard, which has been lovely. But look, we know that, you know, they have contributed to a number of, of burn injuries um, here at Women's and Children's in Adelaide. Um, so yeah, once again, that is a really high risk environment when you've got, uh, you know, um, open fires like that and young children around, that is what, you know, we would consider a high risk environment. Um, you know, young children, they just, they just don't have any concept of the danger. So you really, really, to be able to enjoy that fully and, you know, to not have to think about young children, you would be wanting to restrict access there, just making a safe zone around those types of, of fires so you can continue enjoying them, but, you, you know, comfortable in the fact that you've restricted access and it's, you know, young children can't sort of, you know, get, get to that hazard. Yes. And like we said earlier on, the, the majority of burns are preventable and um, burn injuries really have a long-term um, impact on children, not just um, physically, but mentally as well. So we really do need to do everything we can to prevent, um, you know, any of these um, issues from happening. Um, if you were to, I guess, you know, summarise, I guess, your key points um, from our chat today uh, and key messages for a viewer or a listener to take away, uh, what would they be? So I guess the number one is when it comes to, to burns, what the ultimate goal is preventing them from occurring in the first place. So we, we do not want children to be coming to the emergency department with a burn injury, a serious burn injury. So we want parents and carers to think about their own in home environment in particular, yes. uh, what could be a potential burn hazard and take steps and measures to, to reduce that risk. So prevention is the, is the key. And that's the number one message for National Burns Awareness Month. Um, the second key message then would be in the case of a burn occurring, that yeah, the, the, the correct first aid is administered. Um, and that is the 20 minutes call running water. Um, and that can honestly be the difference if that is uh, done as soon as possible and done correctly, then that can have a huge, a significant impact on that burn and the long-term treatment and outcome of that burn. Um, that would be the second key message. And the third would be KidSafe is here to support uh, parents and carers through that. So, you know, the prevention and the first aid, we've got everything you, you need to be able to think about those things. So our burn safety checklist, our burns first aid magnets, even just our expertise. I mean, you know, we part of our role is to advise um, 
and speak to parents to, to build that knowledge base and capacity so that parents and carers feel comfortable with, with preventing these injuries from occurring and also feel comfortable to, to treat them in case they do happen. So the third key message would be contact KidSafe. Our whole um, our whole brief is, is, is we're here for you to support you, parents and carers, in keeping your children safe. Wonderful. And we've really covered a lot of critical information today during this chat. If parents um, want to sort of find more information, um, where, where do they go to? So everything we've discussed today is on the, the KidSafe uh, website, which is KidSafe SA. No, sorry. I take that back. It's not KidSafe SA, it's kidsafe.com.au. So that's the national website. So yeah, I'm speaking, that's the SA website. Don't go to the SA website, go to kidsafe.com.au. All the information and resources are there. But I might just also add during June, we have a number of resources and campaigns running. So for example, we have... Um, we're delivering our Burn Safe program online for children um, every Wednesday during the month of June, and that's all. That's free. So that's our Burn Safe program that's specifically targeted to children um, aged three to thirteen years. Can just register for that. It's interactive. Um, we. It's a really cool little program. It goes through all the the ways that young children might uh, be burned and it talks about the first aid. So we encourage, um, you know, children, parents um, to get their children involved, teachers to get their classrooms involved. They can, all of that information is on that, the kidsafe.com.au website. Um, there's a number of activity sheets there for children aged 3 to 13 years to learn about the safe uh, burns prevention and first aid. There's a number of other resources, including a video, there's a Facebook competition on the Kids Safe Facebook page where families can win up to $250 vouchers. So there's a lot of ways to, to get involved um, in National Burns Awareness Month through, through Kids Safe. But like I said, all of that information and more is at kidsafe.com.au. Holly, thank you so much for your time today. We'll ensure we have all of those links in the show notes and uh, really look forward to the opportunity of chatting with you again in the future. Thanks again. Thanks. Thanks, Rachel. Okay, take care. Bye. Bye-bye.